So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hello and welcome to Montessori, Creativity and the Meaning of Life. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and you can find all that I do on my website, uh, www.robinnorgren.com. I thought I'd start a new series um, from a book um, called A Monk's Alphabet by Jeremy Driscoll. Here's the premise behind the book. In 187 short essays, Father Jeremy Driscoll shares the fruits of his own reflections on a range of topics, from serious theology to literature to keenly observed moments of nature. They are arranged by alphabetical order to be read in random fashion without preconceived ideas, and the reader will be surprised where they lead the heart and mind. A little bit about Jeremy Driscoll. He is a priest and monk of Mount Angel Abbey, St. Benedict, Oregon, and a professor of theology at Mount Angel Seminary. He is the author of several books, including What Happens at Mass and Steps to Spiritual Perfection. I picked up this book, I want to say, a little over five years ago, um, when I was really starting to dabble in the idea of um, creating a meditation practice. And I had been reading books off and on over the years um, about monasteries. Um, as you know, I've gone to seminary, so I had times as well where I'd have to study um, different saints and things. So I've always had this kind of in my vocabulary, this understanding of um, the monk's life and the meditative life and those things, how they really do inform um, your daily practices. Even if you don't call what you're doing a practice. Um, but anything that you're doing during the day, and especially if you're doing it um, on a consistent basis, it has now become your practice, right? And so I thought this would be a nice um, segue into understanding more about the idea of meditation um, through the eyes of um, one of the masters in med meditation, the monks, right? And so I'm just going to share a few of these essays over the next few weeks. Um, and I invite you to join me in the conversation. Um, and then as also, always, feel free to pick up the book and, and read along with me. So I'm just going to start at the beginning. A. And I'm turning to it right now. So A. Airplane. The winter night is cold and clear. I finish singing Compline with my monastic community and step out into the garden where, far from city lights, I look up to the sky and I see the million stars. Verses from the Psalms still move in me. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, the Lord who made heaven and earth, I will lie down in peace. In the stars I see moving fast among them a jet plane and think with affection of its cargo of passengers. I am able to imagine from my own flying how different the same moment is for them, different from my quiet garden. They speed along somewhere, probably a little cramped and uncomfortable. And yet for all that, they are doing what they are doing is amazing. They travel at high speed to a desired faraway destination. And given the circumstances, there is relative comfort. The terrible cold is shut out, as well as the night. They can listen to music, watch a movie, drink wines from another continent, do remarkable calculations, and other work on their computers. As a Benedictine monk, I live a tradition that is 1,500 years old. 
but I am not living in another time different from my own. This is my century, too. I travel in planes, see the movies, use a computer. It makes me think about how I think. The monastic environment, in fact, offers unique advantages for thinking in a particular way. This environment and these advantages are certainly linked to a tradition, indeed to a very old one. And yet at the same time, the one thinking, in this case me, is also a product of and a player in his own times. That is, he is involved in the kind of world of which jet travel may serve as an emblem. So like any other person living in our times, the monk is potentially a partner and player in a cultural dialogue. He is not disqualified by the ancient traditions to which he adheres. In this fact, among other things, we have in monastic life a clear example of how any tradition works. Traditions are not lived for their own sake. They are valued and lived when they are thought to contain a wisdom still useful for our present and future world. I am willing to live according to the 1,500-year-old rule of St. Benedict because I believe it contains a wisdom useful not only for me, but for my companions, my race, with whom I live this present period of human history. Anniversary if we name a month and the number of a particular day of the month, we are naming a certain position of the earth in relation to the sun, a position the planet held 365 days previous and will hold again that many days hence. I find this marvelous. I am grateful we have language for this fact and can name it, even if it occurred countless times before before ever there was a human species around to speak it. Anniversaries are not pure, pur, purely an arbitrary, arbitrary human construct. There is a real cosmic logic to such remembering. What was this place a year ago today when the sun and earth were placed just so in relation to each other? What was it at that hour and the next hour with this light and the next light? What was it a thousand years ago or a hundred thousand? Today is a day that has much about it that has been like this before. And that is much of its intrigue and beauty. Still, there has never been this particular day of this particular set of 365 of them. The uniqueness is likewise wonderful. Today is the anniversary of many, many things. Things unknown to us, but whose memory is held and cosmically awakened by this particular tilt and slant of earth toward sun, as it is just now today. And what happens today will have its first anniversary a year from now. No one need know it. No one need remember it. It's something, it is enough that something happen, and that the earth and the sun hold its memory in their firm and constant hands. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure and check out all that I do. If you're interested in taking a class with me, I just started a new poetry class over on Udemy. And um, share this with a friend who you think will be encouraged by it.